Hi everyone, I'm Pete from the miniature painting channel, Pete the Wargamer, and in this video, I'll be showing you how I went about painting these Confederate infantry from Epic Battles, American Civil War game, and I'll be using paints from the Army Painter range of paints to do so. The best starting step in painting miniatures is to prime them, and this step is one that is often overlooked, especially by beginners. Primers help to give us a surface that our paint can properly adhere to, as well as giving us a more uniform colour to start the painting process against. There are many methods of priming, be it aerosol, airbrush or brush on, and what you choose is entirely up to you, as is the colour. However, I've chosen to use a grey primer here, as it would allow me to more easily apply the various greys and brown tones that I'll be adding in the first few steps. You will also notice that I attach the infantry to the lollipop stick, Holding this rank of miniatures with my fingers may have damaged the paintwork, but with a little super glue to hold them in place, I had a much better way to hold them. When painting, I opt to paint all of my base coats first. These are followed by the washes and then finally the highlights. This allows you to see your model progressing at each stage and it prevents you from accidentally ruining a good chunk of your paint job with these slightly messier first few layers. Before I apply any base coats, however, I thin the paints down with a little water. Roughly two parts paint to one part water is an ideal ratio and you're looking for consistency similar to what I created here. With the paint ready, I was able to apply it over the miniatures. I had chosen filthy cape to represent the grey fabric. Because each of the models would feature some aspect of grey, I didn't worry too much about being neat here. I simply ensured that every jacket and pair of trousers, as well as the caps, were covered. Now, because I had thinned the paint, I wasn't expecting perfect coverage with the first coat. After this first layer had been properly applied and dried, I applied a second layer over the top. This technique results in a more solid looking base color that I can build up from. Additionally, it helped to ensure the paint was applied smoothly and I wasn't left with brush marks in the paintwork. As I've already mentioned, this thinning and layering technique is something that I repeated across all the following base coats. To represent the so-called butternut aspect of the Confederate uniforms, which was the browning of cloth caused by weathering or different dyes being used for more homespun uniforms, I chose to pick out some of the items of clothing using Monster Brown. I selected a few of the jackets and trousers to be painted brown, but generally didn't choose both to be painted on the same model. I also used this paint to pick out some of the soldiers' beards and hair, as well as any light tan equipment. In much the same way that the jackets and trousers could be closer to brown in appearance rather than grey, the trousers were also sometimes a shade of blue, either through using captured Union stock or from different dyes being used. To represent this, I picked out a few of the trousers using some crystal blue. In addition to this, I also painted the cuffs of the grey jackets this colour as well. However, you could leave these grey if you wished. For the exposed skin around the face and the hands, I chose to use the paint Cobalt Skin, this paint works particularly well as a starting colour as it is light enough to benefit from a wash whilst also being just dark enough to be able to highlight with a realistic skin tone. The next base coat involved using the reddish brown of Dirt Spatter. This paint was first used to paint the wooden stocks of the rifle with the warm tones of this paint being excellent for a wood effect. After painting the rifles, I then used this paint to tackle some of the hair of the soldiers. I picked out a few of the beards and hair with this paint using a fine brush and just a little paint. Any overspills onto the face were cleaned up with some more cobalt skin. For the areas of black leather and fabric, I applied a base coat of Necromancer Cloak. These areas included the shoes, webbing, slouch hat, and forage cap visors. I also used this paint as the basis for the metal areas, like the barrel and the banding around the rifle. I would add metallic paint to this later, but this very dark grey would serve as a good starting point. Finally, this paint was used to paint the remaining beards and hair of the soldiers that had not already been painted with dirt spatter or monster brown. The final base coat to apply to the brass buckles and for this I chose to use weapon bronze. As this was metallic paint, I switched over to a different brush as metallic paints have a tendency to wear out brushes more than regular paints do. In addition to this, after I completed this step, I cleaned out my paint water to prevent any cross-contamination of metal flakes into my other paints. At this stage, all of the base colors had been applied, which meant I could begin to apply my wash. But first, much like I did with the base coat, I also thinned this down too. However, instead of using water, I used some of the Army Painter's Quick Shade Mixing Medium. It's essentially the wash, but without any color or pigment in it. 
By mixing this in equal parts with the wash, I maintain the same paint consistency, but to reduce the strength of the wash, which helps to create a more subtle shading result. With the wash mixed, I could begin to apply it all over the soldiers. The color I had chosen here was Strong Tone. It's a darkish brown that will help to provide shading in those recesses. By darkening down these folds, the wash will increase the contrast between the lighter and darker areas, which will improve the overall realism and depth of the completed miniatures. I applied this wash evenly across all of the miniatures, making sure to avoid the wash pooling up too much in any single location. After the first layer was applied, I allowed the wash to fully dry before progressing on to the next step. With the wash completed, I could move on to painting the highlights. To paint most of these, I used the base color of an area mixed with some arid earth to create a lighter shade. Mixing the two paints in equal quantities resulted in a lighter paint, but by using a pale yellow, the result isn't quite as washed out as it would have been had I just used white instead. I started off with a mixture of filthy cape and arid earth. I used this to highlight any of the grey forage caps, jackets and trousers. To highlight, I used a fine tipped brush and carefully dragged it over the raised folds and details, focusing my application to the upper areas to help simulate how light falls. This lighter colour better contrasted against the darker recesses created by the wash, resulting in a more detailed looking miniature. Now these highlights were completely optional. The miniature was perfectly usable after just the base coat and the wash. This would have kept the painting time down and allowed me to get an army of these painted up much faster. But if like me you want your miniatures looking their best, then I would recommend adding these highlights. The next step followed the same principle as before. This time I created a mixture of monster brown and arid earth to create a pale tan colour that was used to highlight anywhere that had been base coated with monster brown. Next I took some crystal blue, added a little arid earth and painted the fine lines of this pale blue mixture over some of the trousers and the cuffs. For the face and hands, instead of mixing arid earth into my original mixture, I instead used the fair skin tone of corpse pale. This was used to pick out some of the more prominent details like the knuckles and the nose as well as the cheekbones. The wooden furniture of the rifle along with the facial hair was picked out using a mixture of dirt spatter and arid earth. For the areas of leather and fabric that were base coated with necromancer cloak, I added the arid earth into the original base coat and carefully picked out the details of these areas. However, I didn't tackle a dark grey over the rifle just yet. Instead, these areas were highlighted using some of the silver metallic paint gun metal. By highlighting the dark grey of necromancer cloak with a silver paint like this, I created the appearance of a dark metallic colour. The final highlights saw me apply a small amount of greedy gold to each of the brass buckles to help boost their brightness. And with that, all the model needed was a coat of matte varnish and a suitable basing scheme, which left me with this. And here we have the completed Confederate infantry. Now while this guide focused on just infantry, the colors and techniques could be used to paint other American Civil War Confederate forces, such as cavalry and artillery. So thank you for joining me for this painting guide. I hope that you've enjoyed watching and that you've been able to learn something from it. And if you haven't done so already, then check out my previous guide for Union Infantry 2. And so until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.